you're like uh you're like Andre 3000. You just just want to make you comma with all these commas. What kind of fun lovely sex message is this? Brunch. Hit it, boys. <laughs> sucks let's talk about affleck <laughs> i know man uh also this is a uh a, we're all over the place for the past couple of weeks good i uh i fell asleep during you fell asleep <laughs> fell asleep during friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> rachel and uh monica the big fight they get in and she's like oh you fell asleep something like that it's yeah that's uh, uh that, that was something. a good uh that was a good uh, rachel impression there it's a good rachel pull yeah <laughs> Um, Always quoting Rachel from Friends. I fell asleep during the editing last week during Affleck Week, and I literally fell asleep during uh, sleeping, waiting for you to come here this time. That's right. We were planning on doing an early episode, and I did not wake up in time. You're a regular Justin Fields. That's right. Did you hear that? Old Tyler Sagan sleeping through his alarm. Oh, man. I got – let me tell you. I got Tyler Sagan alarm stock alarm clock stories for days. Oh, the the excuse that the team came up with when Tyler this is a very minor detail and really dumb story that became a big thing. The Bruins uh benched Tyler Sagan one day because he uh missed breakfast. He, yeah, he, yeah, he missed breakfast and I believe that was in Dallas, ironically. It was definitely on the road, yeah. and the excuse they came up with was um, that he didn't change his alarm clock or something like that. Uh, there was a time zone thing. Whatever the excuse was, it immediately didn't make sense. <laughs> so reporters had the easiest job that day, w- which was just to ask people to say, so this is what happened? And then as soon as they were like, yeah, be like, all right, well, I'm not trying to pull any gotcha journalism here, but – this is confusing. This doesn't make sense. Because the, either the time zone wasn't different or that well, whatever the it was thing like was. An o- it was like an hour ahead or something. There was a yeah. gaping hole in that story when I think in hindsight the move is just to say like. He overslept. Yeah, he just missed it. Yeah. He, he overslept it. He missed it for whatever reason. He's a kid. He got punished for it. It won't happen again. It didn't end up happening again. But there was that, that was a funny day. I, I remember uh, a, a funny interaction with Dennis Seidenberg w- where – I explained to him. I was like, "But the like that that doesn't make sense." And he was a super nice guy, and he just like thought about it and was like, "Oh yeah, like we didn't think about <laughs> whether or not that <laughs> actually made sense." Dennis Seidenberg, awesome guy. Uh, you fell asleep. Classic Tyler Sagan stuff. I was gonna say I was saying Justin Fields because there was a funny moment in uh, Boston sports radio uh, leading up to the draft where the. Justin Fields' smear campaign, whatever was going on, where people kept saying he's going to fall, he's going to fall. Nobody went to his birthday party. No one went to his birthday party. A regular uh, Bo Callahan. Yep. Somebody, uh, they they reported that he had epilepsy and that he had told teams, yes, I have epilepsy, but it's in my family, and here's how everyone in my family handles it. It shouldn't be an issue. And the great Mike Felger said, I'm not worried about this at all. Like, like um, unless the guy's like literally falling asleep in the pocket, who cares? And there's like dead silence, and both of his co-hosts were like, "You don't know what epilepsy is." Epilepsy. Do you? <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that is tremendous. It was great fun. Uh, also great fun and great restraint on my part. So you did fall asleep. We're recording this bright and early because we had to see spiral from the book of saw we're a movie podcast we're again mo- yeah and there there was no way we could see it unless we did it tuesday night and there was games going on and we just uh, work wise we, we the only way that we could do this was if we saw it in bits and pieces yesterday and then recorded bright and early today and then got the episode out that's why this episode is late but in true affleck week spirit we're continuing to give you the freshest possible episodes. We're not banking it's these. true. We are not banking these. You are getting them right out, hot off the presses. These are very, very warm episodes. You actually might want to wait a second to listen to them if you really want to enjoy them. You might burn That's your right. tongue. Blow, blow on them first. Blow on the episode. These episodes, blow. 
So, you s- fell asleep. I'm coming over here to record. Texted you. Leaving now. Why anything from Duncan? Be there in a few. And like I knew when you when you didn't respond to the first text, yeah. I knew that I was in trouble. Mm-hmm. And which, like to your credit, you were like, I'm gonna get up at at like. 8:30 or 7:30 or whatever it was yeah. and I'm um, I'll I'll play from by year from there and I'll I'll leave immediately and I was like yeah okay DJ whatever Sure that's you, what we always yeah, say good we, call we, pal we, Yeah <laughs> we say we're doing something early <laughs> right So I was like you'll get the episode when you get it I set my I set my alarm for like 9 a.m. and I wake up and just like four texts being like oh wake up stupid <laughs> Yeah I did get mean I d- I called you I called you dingus Yeah Great. Uh, I I'm not even mad. It's a great insult. Yeah. Underutilized. So. But you weren't being a dingus. You were simply asleep. But uh, by being asleep, I was being a dingus. You were probably dreaming, of, fighting crime, <laughs> making the world a better place, doing all sorts of great things. Here I am, in a wake world, calling you dingus. But restraint on my part. You eventually woke up. I was. I called you. Your phone went right to voicemail. That was it? a little troubling. Did yeah. it? You, maybe you were in Do Not Disturb. I wasn't Do Not Disturb. So is that, is that happen when you when you're in Do Not Disturb? Sends it right to voicemail. I didn't even know I that. I think so. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. I just figured that it would like ring on silent. Yeah. I don't know. I huh. called you, texted Ellen. Ellen was great in responding to me. She was so very confused. Chatted with Ellen. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you were just clearly asleep, and that's uh, again. O- over the years, I've been. Uh, this is gonna. S- I'm, I'm not talking about like anger management or anything, but like I, I, ha- I have like been cognizant of what you get mad at people for. In my old age, I'm crankier about some things, but I have such a difficult time actually getting mad at somebody because it takes for something energy. Like it takes like energy on your part to get mad yeah. about things. That's like I, I don't get mad at things. And like again, like you're, you're asleep. You're not. <laughs> right. It's not like you're not telling you to go fuck yourself, right? You're not. You're not like, oh, we're recording early. Well, I guess I'll take this sleeping pill and rec- <laughs> like you. Th- not your intention. You're asleep. Also, to be fair, you have fallen. Ass- you've fallen asleep in the night episodes and not shown up for the night episodes. Yeah, that's, that's way sure. worse. That's for sure. Hap- yeah, I remember. I forget when that was, but that was that was in the early days, and I was I was quite I was quite mad about yeah, that. Yeah, you one. were like. We have a schedule here. <laughs> 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 oh, famous last words. Anyway, I had the opportunity when I showed up to do the worst thing in the world. Something that you'd be very warranted in being mad at me for. Mm-hmm. Which is when someone oversleeps or if someone's late to something, making little jokes about it. <laughs> I, that's one of the worst things a human can do. And as soon as you got to you the said door, You said it as a joke and I was like... Thank God you didn't say that for real. I, I was like, pissed. how cool is it that I'm not doing the like, oh, hey, sleepy <laughs> You know, the uh, the worst one is uh, th- what you, s- you joked. You're like, hey, thanks f- thanks for joining oh, us. Nice, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice of you to join <laughs> us. Nice of <laughs> you to join us, Mr. Go Blackburn. Go to fucking oh, hell. <laughs> fucking asleep. Anyway, it's a little sleep content for you. Hell yeah. Don't sleep on us. We're the brunch podcast on the Washed Media Network <laughs> brought to you currently by no one brought to you by yourselves thanks to the patreon we did get the uh, we did get a, another package from bud light this week i mean call us detective something banks because we are getting package upon package for those of you who have seen zeke Spiral. Banks. zeke ezekiel of course uh really sad moment late in the movie where sam jackson calls him ezekiel mm-hmm. and you're like man this is like a really trying moment, and like he's busting out the full name on his son. That's a twist in the movie. They're related. I'm just kidding. They established <laughs> yeah, pretty they early on. They established that in the preview. Uh, everybody's <laughs> characters are well established. Um, but Bud Bud Light sending us more packages. They sent us. I don't know if this happened to you. They just sent me a 24 pack. Yeah, that came first, and it and was. was like, like, very interesting, like a very, Thanks. very appreciative. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not never gonna be mad about getting a, a 24 pack of Bud Light in the mail, but like, no, no card or anything. It was just like literally in a box. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, kind of a psycho move, but I, I, I like <laughs> right. it. Yeah. Right. 
I like that move if they if that was just like their thing because they said uh, they were like there's more coming because when someone sends you something if you like it and you support it you got to post it somewhere you got to say thanks this is just uh, this is low level influencer life and so I posted like Bud Light sent some beer pretty tight and they responded oh there's more coming I would have loved if the next day they sent like another twenty four more pack. beers, <laughs> yeah. just like loose beers. <laughs> <laughs> no, a six pack with like the ring, like the thing that's bad for fish. And there's five and in it. Two other beers, <laughs> two loose beers. What if they just sent like a Manila envelope and it was like one beer? <laughs> yeah, I mean the the most recent pack, the the there was come, one beer. Yeah. There was one beer because there was a beer in a beard koozie which is really cool i don't know if you've used it yet but i did some like simulated what's it going to be like if i drink from this it's just a bunch of hair in your face yeah it's very cool (laughs) it's uh extremely impractical very very stupid looks cool very very impractical also just a a, an all-time t-shirt an awesome t-shirt that just says ice cold bud light yep very 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 cool very 80s 90s yeah it's, it's like something that you would see your dad wear in like an old photo and you'd be like damn i need that shirt intentionally old school. like i honestly like i want to like spill a little bleach on it or something i want to do something to it's a little acid wash yeah to make it look worse and older um cool thing about me is that i didn't share this package I shared all the other ones but they really? sent this one to like everybody. I I know. Like everybody in the hockey community got this care package, and I was like, you know what? No. Yeah. This is like that's like sending like a, a Snapchat to like your entire fucking friends list. Yeah. It's like sending sending a Snapchat you, that you also posted on your story. I'm like, I'm not responding to this, but I appreciate it. Thank you, Bud Light. <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, wh- es- wh- especially after we've established a, our own personal relationship with Bud Light, I need a little bit more more one to one. A contentious relationship. I That's would say true. most of the text messages I receive are, what's your relationship with Bud Light? <laughs> Do they actually sponsor you? Because you keep posting things that they send you, and then you post angry messages <laughs> to Bud Light. I like that, though. I like keeping the people guessing as to yeah. whether or not that's an actual... It's sort of like our, our Beach Road weekend sort of relationship, sure. where it's like, are they in bed together? Do you think these... Bud Light social media manager understands this. Yes, because they've messaged me and said that they listen to to, to brunch. Really? Yeah, they said that they listen to uh, uh, the episode of brunch where we discuss the uh, the Bud Light versus Budweiser battle, and they loved it. And no, they, no they sponsorship. Would they would <laughs> yeah. say that they loved it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the free advertisement, suckers. Bums. Yeah, it's uh. We even made a mock up of brunch presented by Bud Light. Mm-hmm. But I, the Bud I, Light part is missing, so there's no way of people knowing. It's like when a store goes out of business and like you see the uh, like the signage gets taken down, but yeah. you can still see the outline because it's been there for so long. Yeah, that's sort of like what you did. I, I asked Ellen this week. I was like, should we should we do the unthinkable and like start start shopping around to like Miller Light? Absolutely. And and like try to really put the pressure on Bud Light. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, they I'm want to play that. with us. We'll play with them. Yeah. That's right. I'll do that. And you know what we should do? If Bud Light's listening. And again, I love you, Bud Light. This uh, you, you you say the word in this this battle's over. This fight becomes right. a friendship. We you, we want to lock you up. We want to wipe you up. It's just you, say it. You you're the one that's being well, I need to I need to keep my options open. No, you don't. Here's the thing. We're gonna be those psychos that say, ooh. You want us to test the market? We'll test the market. And then we immediately sign a multi-year deal (laughs) worth no money with the first competitor we find. That's right. Just Just to to prove a point. Just to prove a point. That could drastically change Bud Light's business for years and years to come. That's right. uh, we're, we're, We're easing our way back into normal podcasts. We're short. We're shorting Bud Light stock. We're yes. really pumping them up, and then we're dumping. Exactly. Don't e- don't even mention pump and dump because you you want to find Doge right now. That's in the toilet, bro. 
now's a good time for me to you can buy the dip yeah you can buy the dip i don't know real mess over there with the uh with uh doge fam but we're uh easing our way back into normal podcasts because affleck week is over we're still gonna have some affleck week coming on the patreon because it was too much fun thanks to everybody who made affleck week happen on the patreon thanks people who joined the patreon to participate in affleck week now patreon.com slash listen to brunch you got us creeping up on that sleepover hell yeah we're 70 away from the sleepover and 70 may sound like a big number because it is (laughs) so make it it smaller It is, but I mean, seventy can go away pretty quickly. Seventy's gonna we, happen, as we've noticed. Yeah, like it is. It's we can see it in the horizon. Yeah, seventy can go away pretty quickly. Just ask anyone who has Dogecoin, because that shit was at seventy four. Now, Ooh. Toiletville, USA. <laughs> um, I'm not. D- I, I've just like kept watching Affleck shit when I've had a minute. I haven't, but I. I'm open to it. When I've like, I, I did know. see that you sent out a tweet about your uh, your experience trying to watch the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, and it is possibly oh, the so most sad. you story of all time. Only, only you. You're the only person on the on planet Earth that this would happen to. Please, please. This actually happened. Detail it twice to me this week oh, because no. it happened on demand and IRL, right? Yes. Well. Uh, you're you're an the A-list guy, so it doesn't really count. The, the the one I did with Spiral is somehow less yeah, g- weird than the expl- first one. Explain explain the, what's happening so that I, uh, we don't have to give details into something that the listener doesn't understand. Okay, yeah, far be it from us. So, doing some Affleck stuff. Watched Boiler Room the other day. Saw the new Batman movie. And I went to get a Coke, and the woman behind the counter, I kid, it's a little Tim Heidecker for you. I. Doing Affleck stuff, watched Boiler Room, and I was like, ah, whenever I toss on a movie now, I think I'm just going to make it an Affleck movie. And if Affleck Week did anything, it brought Kevin Smith into our lives in a way I didn't see coming. And people, some people have tweeted at me about the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. They are like, yo, have you seen the Jay and Silent Bob reboot? You don't know what you're talking about until you've seen the Jay and Silent Bob rebu- reboot. Affleck's good in it, Damon's good in it, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, all right, I'll toss it on. I rent it, and I watch some of it, and it's just not that good. So I kind of forget about it. Next day, I go to finish it. It was over 24 hours since the rental period. Isn't it 48 now? I always thought they were 48. Yeah. So maybe that's why I was all twisted. I think a lot of them are 48. Yeah, but this one, for whatever reason, was 24 hours. So I was like, well... This is stupid. I'm halfway through this movie. What am I gonna rent it again? So I just I did. I rented it twice. So I paid eight total dollars to see that movie, and wasn't very good. Affleck was okay in it. The whole movie, by the way, the whole movie of Jane Silent Bob reboot is I would say as much about making fun of Jersey Girl. Than it is about anything else. Really, the punchline, the the go to punchline in that movie. So, th- the plot of the movie is Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Is they uh, got to go to Hollywood because they find out uh, Holden Caulfield is uh, sold uh, Blunt Man and Chronic, and they're making a movie about it, starring Jason Biggs and James Vanderbeek. Okay. They call uh, they. Is that what uh, the pie fucker thing is from? Yeah. Yeah, pie fucker is from... American Pie. No, but I'm saying that there's something where everyone calls Jason Biggs pie fucker. Yeah, American Pie, isn't it? Do they actually call him that? In the I think no, so. No, no, but like, they call like, the actor, they're, like Jason Biggs, they call him pie fucker. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So like, you're the guy that fucked a pie in that movie, right? <laughs> I mean, no. I think that's from Jane Silent Bob. Okay. Anyway, so that's what the first one's about. The Jane Sound Bob reboot is they uh, – oh, Kevin Smith is n- is making a movie – is making a reboot of Blunt Man and Chronic. Okay. So they got to go to Hollywood. They got to go to uh, Comic-Con, something, to stop Kevin Smith. And all they do is make fun of Kevin Smith the whole movie. 
and they call him Kevin James pretty much exclusively. Okay. Also, Holden, Holden Caulfield has been stuck in my mind for like the last Holden 40 Caulfield minutes. Holden Caulfield catcher in the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Holden McNeil? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, it was in my head while you were going through that. I was like, Holden Caulfield, I believe, is catcher in the ride, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to interrupt you. My but bad. I, I just Googled it and I looked it up, and it's true. As soon true. as you said Holden Caulfield, I was like, why are you talking about that? <laughs> yeah. Must have said it. Yeah. Got catcher in the rye on the brain. Uh, so all they do is make fun of Kevin Smith. They call him Kevin James, and James Vanderbeek and Jason Biggs are in this movie. Jason Biggs says, like, fuck Kevin Smith. That guy ruined my life. He, I, he put me in this movie called Jersey Girl. Ruin my life. Ben Affleck is in it, and he is. Uh, There's an ant on my desk. There, that, that's like the, that's like the uh, modern day Woody. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> that's right. It's the 2021 version. Anyway, lots of crapping on Jersey Girl, and I don't get that because Jersey Girl is the best movie in the world. I mean, come it's on, it's only grown on me. M- more, uh, more chasing Amy humor, please. <laughs> Yeah, they I, I will say and again I wasn't really paying attention to this movie as I watched it in two parts. They definitely reeled in the like the Kevin James tone. Kevin James. I'm now, now I'm all <laughs> yeah. fucked up with these. Not a big glass name guy today, huh? Well they, so no, they they keep calling him Kevin James in the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like they they're like, We gotta get to Hollywood, stop that Kevin James fucker. Um But Kevin Smith the the tone, as you would expect in 2019, which is when that movie came out, is a lot different from the late 20 or nine, 1997, 1996 type of stuff. But so did that. Had to watch that twice. Uh, we went back to the movies this week. Mm-hmm. Finally, wait, you, you forgot the best part of this story. Oh, it was free on Amazon. Free on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm trying to support the arts. You know. Yep. All right, yeah, we went back to the movies this week. Uh, We saw Spiral, the movie that we've been talking about for probably like six months. Yeah, it was supposed to come out, I'm assuming, October of 2019 would have been my guess. But I actually think maybe it was supposed to come out like May of last year. I just assume October because Saw movies always come out Halloween. Yeah, that's true. But This is from the book I saw, so they're rewriting the book. This is from the book of Saw, and uh, I had to go twice to that because... I had to work at middle of the day. I had to work at 6.45 or something like that, and they don't do day showings anymore. Yeah. I, uh, Movies are all messed up. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming that they're like, they're probably opening late because they're trying to save money and stuff like that. Uh, not as many showings, but the earliest showings now are at like 4.30. Yeah, I had to do – and then the Celtics played last night and all the hockey's going on, so I had to do – I went to do twenty the first twenty minutes, leave, go work, and then I was gonna catch up with a later showing afterwards, and I was gonna sneak it in and it was all perfectly timed. Except now I'm surprised by this. Previews are longer. So when I went to the second showing, the movie hadn't even started yet. So I had to watch the beginning of Spiral from the Book of Saw multiple times. And let me tell you, I don't think I disliked Spiral as much as I'm guessing you disliked Spiral. I thought Spiral was quite solid. The beginning of that movie is the last thing I want to watch over and it's over horrible. and over again. <laughs> um, by the way, nobody in the world is more okay with watching movies in pieces than you are. I know, and I used to hate that. About One of my friends used to do that, and it drove me crazy. It drives me insane. Yeah. Like, if I'm watching a movie, I'm committed to it. Unless it's like a four-hour Unless movie. Unless it's the Irishman. <laughs> That's true. Um, but like... Even when it comes to watching in theaters, you're, you've done that so many times. We're like, oh, I'll watch a piece of it here and I'll catch the rest of it later on. That's wild to me. But um, you, you, when you got if you have a weird day, if you got a busy day or something, what are you going to do? Not, not watch a movie. movie. Yeah. Nah, you got to do at least uh, I'm doing the thing that you tried to do. The like movie every day thing. Yeah, it's true. You just watching pieces of it. <laughs> really? I do. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, you know what? I, I bet most people we know. We'll go, like, a week, two weeks without seeing a movie. More than that. I think yeah. an average person will seeing go, a like... Seeing a movie used to be... A th- I mean, we never used to watch movies. Yeah, I think for, like, an, a normal average person, like, watching a movie is, like, an event. Yeah. And for a lot of people, I think that going to the movies is, like, a once-a-year thing. Yeah. I Couldn't be me. Yeah, movies are, like... 
it's like a, a meal or a snack or something. It's it just felt something so that you're always kind of doing. It felt so good to be back there. And oh, yeah. It just felt picking up my chicken tenders. Oh, oh man. man, I finished my chicken tenders before the movie even started. Same. <laughs> I inhaled those things. I made I so I had the chicken tenders for the second showing and I was eating them so fast. I was like, all right. You got to at least save some of the chicken tenders for a part of the movie that you haven't seen yet. Because I saw the beginning of the movie and I had to leave. And I was like, you're not going to you're not going to be done with chicken tenders before you've made any progress on this movie. So I saved like three bites. It was the part where I after didn't. he meets with uh, Boz's wife. Okay. I, I feel I, I couldn't imagine a worse movie to save food for to eat during it than this one. Yeah. I was I was immediately mad at myself. I was like, yo, should have loaded up. Should have made this an extravaganza. I know. I, sh- I feel like I should have gotten two orders of chicken tenders, honestly. They got those Wonder Woman buckets. Did you see those? <laughs> yeah, they have the Wonder Woman 1984 stuff, yeah. which is hilarious because that movie came out like 18 months ago. I know. I want that shit. I want to be <laughs> like, yo, can if how many chicken tender orders do I have to buy for you to toss them in that W Dub 84? I wonder how much like like backup stuff that they have based off of movies that were supposed to come out and then never like never did and then like they just have a ton of shit in the back room that they're trying to get rid of for real i thought about that i was like i wonder how much i wonder if like any of this candy is gonna be expired like folks when you go to the movies check that expiration date you never know yeah they probably got all this inventory how was uh how was the theater how was the did you have an audience when you were when you were there first showing yes second showing eric carmen Smash song, fans. maybe Celine Dion would ring a better bell for you. All by myself. Ah, yeah, nice, great song. You know that song? Uh, Did you say Eric Cartman. Carmen, Eric Carmen. Oh, that's right. All I, by I myself. Was very confused. That's why I'm I said I guess it was 1984. Let's see. <coughs> All by myself. I, I'm gonna have a crazy story about that. When did it come out? 1975. What a loser, DJ. You fucking idiot. All right. So the the song is based off the second movement. Of Sergei Rach- Rachmaninoff's okay. 1990, 1900 Piano Concerto Number no. 2 in C minor. He took a piece of classical music. He was like, I'm going to turn it into a pop song. You know the song, right? All by myself? Yeah. He's like, I'm going to take this piece of classical music, turn it into a pop song. Billy Joel did it with This Night. Happens all the time. He thought that it was just like canon. So he thought that this was just this just belonged to the world and he'd be able to make this hit pop song make all this money off it Mm -hmm. and there was some reason that they were like no so he didn't make as much money off of that song but i always wondered how do you write a song like this you steal from classical music that's your fun fact on eric carmen today but yeah solo in the second theater there were a decent amount of people in, in my theater and i gotta say i don't know if it was the pandemic everybody very well behaved. Not a single, not a single peep from anybody in the theater. Really? Yeah. Were you taking notes? Yeah. Yeah, I was too. Yeah. I don't. F- I didn't feel bad about that. Well, there was nobody like in the direct vicinity of me. Like there was nobody directly next to me, which is nice about the social distancing thing. Like I can take my notes and not feel bad about it. Yeah. So, um, y- we got to read. So we'll we'll hit the uh, the old spiral discussion after this. The English language is a crazy thing. It's always getting us in trouble. Tim Heidecker said that one time. He said, we got to do something about the English language. It's always getting us in trouble. And he checked his notes, and he's like, I have one example of that. Because he was doing a bad job of communicating with the audience. (laughs) Oh, yes. And that makes sense, because what you mean can get lost in how you say something. We've all been there before. You drop a comma you put a comma that should be there that's that's what drives me crazy that's uh w- what i use all the time if i'm mocking the trabe tuka people i'll just throw a bunch of extra commas in there because people love using commas and they don't know how to use them mm-hmm. that's commas is the easiest like i'm a as a writer i yeah. will admit that i'm not the best at the english language mm-hmm. usage of comma is the easiest thing in the world assume you don't need it that's the way that i that's that's the advice that i would give with commas assume you don't need it and then look and say you can always fill them in later right 
But if you're starting just throwing commas all over the place, it's going to be a mess. And if you got something like Grammarly, it's going to help you out with that. So you don't got to learn all these tricks of the trade. Grammarly gets you where you need to go. And by that, I mean it helps you communicate without that message getting lost. Clarity. It's huge on that. Vocabulary suggestions. If I'm going back and proofreading something I wrote, I'm always looking for, am I repeating words? Am I starting multiple sentences with the same words? Things like that. Grammarly is looking out for you. So you don't got to go back and say, where did I mess this up? How could I make this more concise? Grammarly is looking out for you every step of the way. It's super intuitive to integrate into your life when you've got it, especially Grammarly Premium, which is a paid product. It just elevates your writing. It's everywhere. You install it and you'll have it across all your, you'll have it on your devices. You'll have it on your computer. Your email, Word, Google e Docs. Everything. Grammarly Premium helps you communicate more effectively with advanced real-time feedback. It doesn't just correct your mistakes. It helps you build up your skills as a writer with advanced suggestions on grammar, punctuation, senti sentence structure, and style. It's the perfect writing tool for anyone who wants to stand out with every word. Whether it's, as you said, a work email, whether it's a friendly email, uh, if it's a uh, fun, lovely Fun, lovely oh, sex no. message? <laughs> yeah. uh, a fun, lovely sex message from your wife. A fun, lovely sex message from your wife. That, of course, a Ben Affleck reference. An Affleck deep cut. An Affleck deep cut when he was on Any Given Wednesday with Bill Simmons ranting about Deflategate in a video that went viral. Mm -hmm. Very, A very passionate Ben Affleck talking about why would Tom Brady – want to give over his phone to the NFL, which leaks everything. Good point by Ben Affleck. It's true. And he said, they're going to find all sorts of things that have nothing to do with this. Well, uh, such as what a if he fun, has some fun, lovely sex messages from his wife. A fun, lovely sex message from his wife. So, if you're sending a fun, lovely sex message, don't – that that's – that's nothing, one area nothing, where you don't want to mess up the communication. Nothing turns somebody off more than bad grammar and a fun, lovely sex message. It's what makes it not fun. That's right. And not lovely. Not lovely. You say, hey, you know, hey, th this is this one's okay, but you know what would really be lovely? Threw a comma in there, pal. If you, right, if you <laughs> eased up on the commas, <laughs> boy, oh, boy, you're like, uh, you're like Andre 3000. You just just want to make you comma with all these commas what kind of fun lovely sex message is this grammarly premium helps you communicate more effectively with advanced real-time feedback it doesn't just correct your mistakes it helps you build up your skills as a writer and you have i said this already yes i have mm -hmm. i feel that i owe it to grammarly premium for that detour we took Su grammarly premium improve your sex messages <laughs> Suggestions on grammar, punctuation, sentence structure, and style. Perfect writing tool for anyone who wants to stand out with every word, whether it's for work, school, or personal projects. Do more than just spell check. Say what you really mean with Grammarly Premium. Get 20% off Grammarly Premium by signing up at Grammarly.com slash brunch. That's 20% off G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash brunch brunch fun lovely sex message what a fun that's, lovely that's read said, right yeah yeah hilarious it's not like there's a word for that right S sext <laughs> fun lovely sex <laughs> but you know what? nobody like, has ever described a sext as being fun and lovely i don't hate that move from affleck though i feel like he's trying to be respectful right but he's not trying to be like crass or like he he was he was trying to like get to his point right. and and be like a respectful respectful about it and he just took the weirdest detour. I kind of like his move though. I think that he's like, and this has always been the case. Like everything revol uh, uh, around like sex has to be served with like a side of like it's bad. Like <laughs> this is like dirty stuff. Blah, blah blah. When like like yeah, there's no shame involved in that. Right, it's just it's like, like you don't want the NFL to see healthy it. Healthy thing. Mm -hmm. It's like. Uh, this is your spouse. You're you right. going to be flirting from time to time. You're in a relationship. I kind of like the way that Affleck frames it versus the, like, 
Dirty yeah, messages. They go there. <laughs> Sign me up for the fun, lovely stuff. There you go, Ben Affleck. So that's Grammarly. Ben Affleck in a lot of movies. Spiral. Not one of them. Is em, a movie. Unfortunately. Affleck could have been in this movie. No, he couldn't have. Yeah, it's a movie. Affleck's that's in true. every movie. He's, yeah, that's true. If it's this not movie, like he hasn't done a stinker before. If this movie had Ben Affleck, I mean, who's he playing? Probably, uh, probably Max Mingella. How do you do? You know how to say it? Oh, yeah, the 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 head. Yeah, the, the chief. Uh, the no, department no, no. Head, department head. No, no, no. This is the the the, the rookie. Oh, yeah. he's too old to play a rookie, man. The guy uh, from. We've already had this discussion. At this point in Ben Affleck's career, he plays guys that's just fucking over this shit. So uh, he would Chris eat. Rock's dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be that'd be a twist. Sam Jackson and. I could see Chris Rock and Ben Affleck playing relatives. I guess like brother in laws, maybe, or like uh, like maybe like adopted say, brothers right, or something. I was gonna say like adopted. Yeah, yeah. There's I could go for I could go for like a, a four brothers reboot in which like it's uh, Ben Affleck and and Chris Rock. Hell yeah. He could have been. I mean, I would say Saw movies are pretty easy, or would allow for easy cameos. Yeah. Especially if if you're I someone just, who dies. I just don't know if anybody's taking time out of their schedule to to appear in the prestigious siege uh prestigious saw franchise i don't know i mean stonks are up i would say with this cast you would you would think but let's get to it this movie sucks ass no it doesn't it does no it It does it certainly does this movie sucks ass i'm not i'm not in deep into the saw franchise as you are so i think that that's maybe like broadened your view of it like i'm sure that there are worse saw movies than this one but guess what this movie sucks ass and especially especially with the um like we talked about going into it it felt like saw was trying to reinvent reinvent itself with this movie like taking it itself a bit more seriously you've got uh chris rock uh, like a obviously i don't want to say like an established actor because it's it's chris rock he's an established a-lister personality comedian Everybody loves Chris Rock. He was very bad in this movie. She, out, outrageously bad. I don't think so. I thought that the, this was one of the worst acted movies I've ever seen. No. Yes. Wrong. Because yes. Chris Rock doesn't play a character in this movie. Chris Rock is just Chris Rock in this movie. B- even down to the vocalized pauses. Chris Rock just does a, a Chris Rock act the entire movie. Down to... He'll say, like, after he says something, he'll say, like, that's right. The way Chris Rock, like, if Chris Rock, if Chris Rock is reading Max Minghella's Wikipedia page, which I have open right now, let's say, Max Giorgio uh, Choa Minghella, born 16 September 1985, is an English actor and filmmaker. That's right. He's appeared in several American films, making his debut in B.C.'s in 2005 before starring in blah, 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 blah. That's right. He says that's right a lot after he finishes a sentence or after he makes a point. He does that throughout this movie. He's clearly just like riffing and doing Chris Rock bits, which this he's an executive producer on this movie. He's mm-hmm. a big part of this movie. Like he's he's what made this movie happen. He bought right. it or whatever. He was really the the driving force behind this movie. They got the script and he brought in the director and somebody else. And they just rewrote the script together. And I'm sure it was a lot of Chris Rock being like, and then I'm going to do th- like th- he he like def- he legitimately is Chris Rock. He defends like uh like comedians saying inappropriate things and oh, shit yeah. throughout the movie. He said yeah. It, the uh the, the opening scene was really good in which they're riffing on Forrest Gump. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was uh that was quite good. I like I enjoyed that. Yeah, but th- that that's like he's doing a He's doing it right. Act. You can tell that that was written by Chris Rock. <laughs> you you could tell that al- that all of the Chris Rock dialogue is written by Chris Rock. But I don't think this was a bad movie. You are right that me having seen the other Saw movies probably clouds my judgment because I know what a bad Saw movie looks like. And Saw has Saw is like the longest running franchise, I would say, to never be particularly good. Its first, the first movie, one's I good. think, is considered a legitimately good movie, and everything after that has has been uh, has riding been, the coattails, basically. But I mean, the drop off is so steep; it's incredible, and I think that a lot of franchises do that. Like Aladdin did that. 
they made the first one that everyone loved, and they were like, all right, let's just kind of pump out these other bad ones. And, I mean, in the case of the later Saw movies, as, as far as, like, the as far as I went, like, Saw 4, I think, was the last one that I saw. Nailed it. Um, But, <laughs> uh, like, they just became torture porn eventually. Oh, yeah. And this wasn't that. Like, I, I didn't feel like they went too over the top. A lot of the stuff that they did do was, was obviously graphic and, you know, it was torture because that's what Saw is. But, like, it, it, it wasn't over the top. But it was just, like, th- none of the none of this movie was particularly strong. It's way more of a – I totally agree. Like, they th- – far fewer traps, some of them as ugly as any you'll see. The first – the first, first one, is one is really brutal. Like, I that's, don't, that's the quickest – actually, that's not, the, that's not true. Th- I was going to say that's the quickest into a Saw movie. I've covered my eyes, but generally the first death in all Saw movies are pretty horrible. Yeah, I I had like pretty pretty visceral reactions to like every death in this movie. Um, well, not everyone, but like like ninety percent of them. And the first one, I don't fuck with like tongue and teeth sort of shit, and yeah. it makes me so uncomfortable. So that was a very very tough first watch. Yeah, I, I, I we'll try to be delicate with uh, the description. Do we want to get into the, the like describing the the traps and stuff? I feel I'd like say let's be delicate. Like yeah. I'll say, okay, uh, trigger warning, tongue and teeth stuff. The first trap, the person has to rip their own tongue out, mm-hmm. and wouldn't you die? You would assume you that like, like bleed, bleed out. So, like you'd you'd have to get. Medical Immediate attention. Immediate medical attention. Immediately. And you could not explain it to somebody, and you're in the middle. They were the person was in the middle of a subway. Yeah. And a lot of this, a lot of the the, the traps or the trap scenes in this movie are like they get you. Well, I guess this, this is true for a lot of the saw deaths, but like they take you through this whole like torture process, and the person dies anyway. Yes. Yeah, so that that's very. Um, I don't know if you saw Saw Three. But that's one of the big things with uh, Saw 3. Shawnee Smith's character, shout out Affleck Week. She was in that scene with uh, Steve Buscemi in Armageddon, the the woman from Becker. Okay. Big fan of uh, Shawnee Smith. Is that her name? I've been so bad with names today that I'm afraid. Shawnee Smith, American actress. That's right. She She takes over for Jigsaw. But starting with the third one, she makes them so the person dies no matter what. So, like, people will win and they'll still die, which is as offensive as it gets <laughs> if you're a Saw viewer. I don't think anyone's watching those movies because, like, they agree morally with the movie, right? <laughs> right. But, like, they understand the rules, which it's is, like, to be this a person's in, like, a dire situation. Like, how far will they go to save themselves? Right. And then when the people do it and then still die, you're like, it's it feels cheap. It's cheap. You're like, what am I watching here? What the hell is this? This is horrible. Obviously, it's all horrible and brutal. Anyway, this movie very big on that. The person who is behind, the person who is doing the jigsaw stuff, I would say cares very little about whether the person actually completes the task. Furthermore, the person who is running these games does not care about other people people who have nothing to do with the task yeah so the first person gets hit by a train Mm -hmm. he that that ruins the conductor's life yeah right yeah if you you, you're driving the train and you see this person like that has to destroy somebody maybe destroys that person's family there's so many ramifications that i think that this movie doesn't consider yeah and and that that does that did bother me because it, it is a departure from like the intention of of saw is like being a teaching these people a lesson and shit like that and that's what like this that's what the entire foundation of saw is set upon but on the other hand like this is a copycat this is not the original guy so like the fact that 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 sort of gets lost is a plausible sort of realistic thing where it's Somebody's trying to take what this person started, and they're completely losing the the message and the intent behind it, and fucking it up. Like I can understand that. Yeah, shoddiness. Yeah. Right. Like if one. P- yeah. I, I I get that. Yeah. There, there's there should be some, like shoddiness in all, 
non John Kramers because yeah. like, there's only one. Right, but like as a viewer, you do want to feel like this is all happening for for a reason, yeah. and that like this movie has a purpose. And I just didn't feel like this movie even had a purpose. So there, I I would guess there's as you said, there's fewer there's fewer traps. I would say there's maybe five or six in this movie, and only one survivor. Only one person gets out of a trap, but it's a trap that they're kind of basically given the keys to, for lack of a better term. Chris Rock's character is in a trap. This is going to be spoilers, but we, we, we review Saw movies assuming people aren't going uh, to yeah, that movie. Yeah, that's why I kind of want to do the um, lightly, dis- lightly describe the traps, because I just assume that most people aren't going to watch this movie. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. By I the mean, way, I would not recommend. So this movie – looks way more like a movie. This movie, I wrote down, it looks like a movie. It's like when Taco Bell makes its commercials look like movies. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, It so this movie, like, it, it gave me sort of Seven vibes. Okay. Um, I haven't seen that. You haven't seen Seven? Seven's pretty good. Um, It gives me Seven vibes. Like it, it feels like it's trying to be Seven, but it's it's Saw, and, <laughs> and it's not good. <laughs> but it's Saw is the ultimate downfall. <laughs> For most things Saw tries to accomplish. Chris Rock plays Zeke Banks, Mm -hmm. a cop who – a detective? Cop? Detective. Detective. And everyone at the precinct hates him. They call him a rat because he turned in a dirty cop. He saw a guy murder a witness and was like, I mean, you obviously can't do that. (laughs) Have to tell on you for that. This movie, by the way – Shot obviously pre twenty twenty, but wrestles with the dynamic or the the place that police has in society and good cops versus bad cops. Yeah, uh, I mean, spoiler alert: no fucking good cops in this movie. I think that is there. I think there's one good cop. And I, I think it's j- Chris Rock is the <laughs> yeah, only yeah. good cop. It's He's crazy. A, yeah. Uh, and there's like a – it's like kind of training day-ish where Chris Rock is a good cop, works in a precinct with all bad cops. Everyone's mad at him. He's assigned a rookie as his partner, played by Max Minghella. I'm always going to struggle with that name. I apologize. He's the son of the guy who directed The English Patient. He's also in – the Social Network, The Internship, and I've not seen this, but he's in Handmaid's Tale. Cool. G- a guy that when he shows up and stuff, you're like, why is this guy in more stuff? He was pretty solid. Yeah, he's fine. I would say that, like... Very handsome. He has the best acting performance in this movie, and, it, and like, nobody else is good. <laughs> I, I'm just like, why didn't they work on this? The, the movie looks like it was rushed, and obviously... If you knew that you were going to end up having like another year and a half to put it out, maybe they would have spent a little more time on it. But it does th- – the acting performances are not good. I was not distracted by them, though. I was di- I was actually actively distracted by them. Mm. All right. So Chris Rock is a cop, and there is – the cops start dying in jigsaw traps. They're getting kidnapped. They're dying. Packages are being left for Chris Rock. It's a real scavenger hunt. Honestly, after watching Gone Girl, I was a little uh, I was a little triggered because a lot of Gone Girl vibes with packages, step one, step two, step three, et cetera, et cetera. His dad was a cop. His dad is Samuel L. Jackson, was a cop. Huge bait and switch with Samuel L. Jackson in this. Why? He's in the movie for like two minutes. He's Affleck in Boiler Room. He's in the movie, but I think that if you say Chris Rock, Sam Jackson, you're like, oh, whoa, 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 it's Chris Rock. I mean, in the in the trailer, it's it's very much like this is a Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson movie. But would you consider Affleck as being in Boiler Room? I think that I Affleck think he got has the poster. a poster. Affleck has a bigger role in Boiler Room than Samuel L. Jackson has in this movie. Like Affleck in Boiler Room has at least two significant scenes. Oh, he. Uh, Sam Jackson has multiple significant scenes. He has the most significant and most outrageous movie scene I've ever seen in my life. Which one? 
the last scene. Yeah, that one's ridiculous. But like you, obviously, you had to have that one, and like he barely has a role in that. Just he's just there. True. True. All right. Like he has he has one scene where he has to do work. Right. Uh, I'm gonna give this movie credit. It got it, it. It tips its jump scares, which I think Saw has actually been doing for a while. Saw is known for yeah. It's not like a scary movie. It's, right. It's more of just like a uh, torture porn franchise. Right. So Saw, aesthetically, I think Saw is known for uh, Billy, mm-hmm. the doll, which I don't think do I don't think there's any Billy in this not movie. Not a single Billy. There's no Billy. There's definitely not the voice. The voice is tough. The voice takes getting used to in the in the movie. Yeah, but I actually liked scraps. it. Like like it, it wasn't it wasn't super corny. It was like it just very speech to text kind y- of. It it was more just like very play it down the middle. It's it's not like trying to be intimidating. It's more just like, "Hey, I'm the new saw person and yeah. we're going to play a game here." <laughs> <laughs> it was like very hey gang, very you know unassuming. The, uh, <laughs> you know the deal? Uh all the Billy things were replaced by pigs. So Which pi- I thought, so thought was a little too on the nose. So pigs, uh, pigs do happen in the Saw movies. The pig always uh, is the one that abducts you mm-hmm. or gets you when you're looking for something. They they'll like show some lighting on a pig behind the person, but not in like a scary way. So you just know you, they kind of give you a second and a half to prepare. Like right, hey, there's about to be like a big sound or a scary thing. So shout out Saw for for that. Yeah, the voice is fine. It takes getting used to. It didn't bother me. To. Didn't bother me. So a lot of things bothered me in this movie. That wasn't one of them. <laughs> so these cops are getting abducted. They're getting killed. Chris Rock has this rookie cop partner who talks all the time about his family. He's a major wife guy. This uh, this Max M. He's always talking about his wife. Could you tell from watching? Could you tell as you were watching that this guy doesn't have a wife? No. I could. I was really? distracted by that. I was like, something, for some reason, this guy doesn't have a wife, and maybe he's the bad guy, and he's mad about, like, they, they took his wife or something, like the cop did something to his wife. I don't know, but this guy talks all the time about having a wife, and he clearly doesn't have a wife. There's a scene where Chris Rock calls him, and he's like, hey, yeah, I can talk. Wife's out for a, a girl's night. And I was like, this guy and his fucking wife, man. And there's a lot of, like, w- uh, girl's night. More like Dick Knight. Oh yeah, Chris Rock does a lot of comedy about how he's divorced and how getting divorced, getting divorced. Which right. he says is worse. He compares it to chemo. Yeah, that's right. He says, he says, uh, I'm getting divorced. We'll see if it takes. It's like chemo. I'm like, who? Chris Rock. I know your character two seconds ago just defended like you can say whatever you want as long as it's a joke. But let's uh. Let's clean it up. Like, we're, like, <laughs> ten minutes into the movie, and we've already seen a lot of violence. Like, can we have there was a whole something about this be There was a whole bit when they were walking into that subway about, like, uh, I find out that Pilates doesn't even exist. Great line. Great <laughs> line. He says women can do a lot of cheating in the during daytime. The da- in yeah. the daytime. You can ride a lot of dick during the day. <laughs> yeah, he said, I just found out Pilates doesn't exist. I was like, I think that we could all laugh at. That's that, that, that didn't that's get a single laugh in the theater. I know no laugh. No, no, not a single laugh. And it's funny how like how something like that, your reaction to something like that can be determined by the reaction of like the people in the theater. Yeah. So that one just felt like it completely fell flat. So uh, that's funny. Not in like, oh, yeah, true. Like women always say they're going to Pilates and then cheat on their spouses or whatever. Such a stupid line. <laughs> but like from the perspective of. A guy who's been cheated on being like, oh, Pilates doesn't exist. Everything <laughs> is just people cheating on you. I was like, that's uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, so. My, li- my wife loves Pilates. I bet she does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, y- we, we've done that joke already. <laughs> so this guy is, th- this Max guy, he's learning the ropes with this very jaded detective who hates being a detective. Probably because he's the only good detective there, and everyone's so mean to him. But there's a funny scene early on where they uh, a cop dies, and they p- get a video that's sent to them, and it's like very jigsawy. Mm-hmm. And Max, the rookie, says, "I thought, I thought a jigsaw was dead. So you're a cop, and you don't know, or you're you're not sure." 
about the most notorious <laughs> serial right. killer in the town in which you're a cop. <laughs> there's a lot, man. Like, there's just some like very shitty cops <laughs> yeah. in this movie. Like, obviously, like shitty, and that like some of or a lot of them are dirty. But they're also very stupid and they're like very unaware. Like, there's probably a handful of cops that die in this movie, and none of the other cops realize until they get like the package telling them that the other cop is dead. It's like, so y- you haven't heard from this guy in yeah. like two days, and you just haven't haven't maybe figured out or been worried that that like there's a s- cop serial killer, and the person that went missing m- may have been dead. And like this guy's being sent out on assignments and everything like they're <laughs> having him do shit it's like covering it's like if i was when i was covering the bruins like a couple games into my first regular season being like so you guys mean bruins like bears <laughs> like having that little knowledge about the thing you're doing so that's a little uh a- alarming there's also a scene where the rookie cop borrows Chris Rock's phone, and Chris Rock says, don't drain my phone watching Twilight. <laughs> Sick joke, Seinfeld. <laughs> that's the most, like, current, not, like, modern Seinfeld. Like, that's the most, like, current Jerry Seinfeld joke <laughs> in the world. Uh, it's, like, an extremely dated thing that he thinks is, like, well, I'm going to burn him with yeah, this. Right. Um the the one line that I wrote down, and I think it came in like the ex- like the same scene, was uh, I've been looking at this for five hours. I don't even look at porn that long. Yeah, no shit. Who mm. looks at porn for five no hours? Shit. Strange way to spend <laughs> yeah, your day. What? What a wild line. So maybe you'll be able to tell it from some of the bits we've given you so far, but. The bad guy is this rookie cop. Mm-hmm. He he disappears in the middle of the movie. He, quote-unquote, gets killed where a tattooed part of his body is found. Very easy thing to fake. Mm-hmm. So he ends up being the bad guy. He's mad because <laughs> – he's mad. Uh, he's doing all this because the cop that murdered the witness – back when Chris Rock turned him in 12 years ago, was that guy's dad. So this guy... The witness was his dad. Yes, so he's aiming to team up with Chris Rock to find the bad cops and then kill them. Yeah, purge the department of bad cops. Right, and turns out the last one that he wants to take down is Chris Rock's dad who isn't a cop anymore, but he was in charge when all these cops became bad, and he even encouraged it. So he takes him through one final game, and it is the most, I will say, having seen every Saw movie, I think it would rank number one, the most outrageous (laughs) Saw moments. It is a preposterous trap. What did you say or think when you saw it? I had no idea. Like, I was just totally perplexed by what was going on. They don't really – the the good thing about the Saw franchise is that it does a really good job of of laying out and explaining the traps as they're presenting them to you. Yeah. No explanation as to what was happening in this trap. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. A lot of times at the end, they'll do – there will be a trap you don't totally understand, and then it's kind of revealed to you in a second – and then you see it all come crashing down. You're like, ooh, it all gets tied together and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's how they killed uh, Donnie Wahlberg. He's uh, he's like standing on this thing. It's one of the middle Saw movies. But he's standing on this thing, and uh, there's a lot of ice going on, and like there's water dripping off of ice blocks, and you're like, what's happening here? And then a guy opens a door that's that's uh, booby-trapped, and or trip-wired, I should say, and it makes the two ice blocks fall and smash his head. And, like, you kind of – you see it coming together in the final seconds. Mm-hmm. They do this for the last trap where he has Samuel L. Jackson on this thing bleeding out. He's basically, like, uh, like strung up. Yeah. I, 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 and I guess it's so he's supposed to be, like, a marionette. Yes. And so he's got, like, all these, uh, I would say, tubes – yeah. That are, like, draining his blood. Right. And he c- 
calls the cops and says, hey, I'm at this building. There's a crazy guy with a gun. There's a crazy guy shooting a gun. And he shoots a bunch of rounds from a gun and then gives it to Chris Rock. And he says, you can – there's one bullet in this gun. You can shoot me for all that I've done or you can shoot that target up there and that will let your dad go. So Chris Rock shoots the target. Samuel L. Jackson is let go from this thing, but he's still kind of tied into it. Yeah, you know, like huh. it, it see, it, like you mentioned in the uh, the like the first trap, probably would have died anyway. Yeah, there's a he lost a lot of blood, and he seemed to be fading quite quickly. Oh yeah, I mean Samuel L. Jackson was in a movie and not screaming. <laughs> right. Yeah. He was. He was tired. Yeah, he <laughs> was uh, like wiped out. He had lost so much blood, so. The cops come to the building where he said, hey, this is where we are. And you see there's a tripwire mm-hmm. across the wall. Across so the door, yeah. Th- yeah, a door that's closed, so mm-hmm. they have to uh, saw Try. their way in. Yeah. Saw. Also, they, they had the they did like an homage to the original Saw movie where Chris Rock wakes up in that building yeah. with his uh, with handcuffed to a, uh, to a pipe yeah. with a little saw next to him. Turns out there's a key. Like so that, that that's the, that's what I'm talking about. That that was the only <laughs> yeah. trap that someone survived. Which I don't know why they put the saw there. I think it was just more of like a just he wink, th- wink. The the killer really liked saw, <laughs> even though he didn't know that the jigsaw was dead. Yeah, he seemed to know every trap, but didn't know that he was dead. That was my first. I was like, it it might be this guy. Also, they never explain how how uh, how this guy l- like learned how to make these that's traps. That's the biggest <laughs> thing. That's the bi- that's the biggest thing with these copycat killers. The years and years of engineering you have to learn. Like that guy must have, from the second he saw that murder, must have immediately started Hit hitting the books. the books. Yeah. In some of these. Maybe they intentionally do this. Some of these traps, very convoluted. Mm -hmm. Like, probably could have been done. I wasn't trying to think of how it could have been done differently (laughs) because it's just really messed up. But a lot of these traps could have been probably workshopped and done more efficiently. They're the water one with the fingers. Copper wire. Yeah, that one was ridiculous. There there was so many things going on there that I was like, you probably could have found an easier way to go about this. But, so Samuel Jackson gets out of this trap, kind of, but there's still that tripwire. They, the cops saw their way into the room, and they hit the tripwire. It raises Samuel L. Jackson up, and he's like, what's going on here? Wait, 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 wait what's happening? And it brings up Samuel L. Jackson's arm with... A gun attached to it. Mm -hmm. So the police are entering. And it turns on a spotlight behind him so that he becomes like a silhouette. Yes. So his arm is raised up with a gun as the cops are entering. And Samuel Jackson's like, uh, what is (laughs) this exactly? And the cops shoot him yeah they light him up they light him up because he's got a gun on is the gun firing no it's the most insane how did this person make all of this work technically <laughs> yeah and it was one of the few times you should probably think this a lot of the times when watching saw but it was a true moment where i was like not in a good way. How did someone think of this? Right. <laughs> this is the most batshit thing I've ever seen in my life. How is this a movie? Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of the same reaction from me. And uh, it was also extremely convenient uh, that the the guy got away in the final. Yeah, and then he just walked out. He just takes an elevator down. It's like there's a there's a, an entire – the entire police force shows up, kills Samuel Jackson – they surround Chris Rock, but they don't notice the guy who's in the elevator like 10 feet away, and he just takes the elevator down and gets away. Huge SWAT team there. He didn't really plan his own exit. No. They, I, I mean, as I talk through it, 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 it's a Saw movie, so it is bad, but 
That it's was a bad one movie. of the better Saw movies. That is not true. That can't be true. I think Once Upon a Time, I did try to rank them, but I would say that's probably like a top. <laughs> that's so easily sad. Easily, that's like a top four Saw movie. That is so sad. It's a mess. Like I said, I, I think that this, this um, had the intentions of being more of a movie than a lot of the other Saw movies, where later on in the Saw series, it's just like, we're going to give you two hours or 90 minutes <laughs> of just horrible, horrible torture. This one tried to have a plot, tried yeah. to have um, some semblance of, of like respectability to it, but it just wasn't good enough. There was one great line from Chris Rock when uh, Max says to him, how do you take your coffee? Alone. He says alone. I that's was an, like, that's a bar. Filing that away. <laughs> right. We'll be saying that all the time at the Dunkin' Donuts drive through <laughs> Hi, I'll have some coffee. How do you like it? How do you like it? Alone, Alone bitch. Bang. <laughs> and then you just drive off with no coffee. Uh, is that Jesse Pinkman uh, ordering Yeah. <laughs> ordering coffee from Dunkin' Donuts? So that's Saw, or that's Spiral. The trailers, you got to watch out. Trailers are longer these days, folks. They're 25 minutes now. That threw me for a massive loop. I don't know if that's true. Maybe it was your uh, maybe it was your theater. I felt like my, my, mine was pretty normal. I hit two theaters and it was that way. Hmm. Because when I went to show up for the second show, because I wanted to see the first 20 minutes one place, had to see the rest somewhere else, I got there like 25 minutes after, and the movie was just starting. Or 25 minutes after its uh, listed time. They were playing by NBC rules. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, saying like a playoff start time. Yeah, where they show the the hockey games later. But yeah, that was, that was the most absurd movie ending I think I've ever seen. We've got uh, more movies coming, though. For sure. Next week, Dog Joker and Quiet Place 2. Yeah. That's going to be a very busy week. I think that we also have to watch our Wrath of Man. People keep saying that that we've got to watch that. It's a new Guy Ritchie movie. Okay. Also, there's a Bob Odenkirk movie out. Nobody? That's yes. been out. Yeah. I gotta see that. That one I might I might catch on demand. Yeah, I think uh, we could really kind of start stockpiling the movies. Yeah, they're coming fast and furious. I'm definitely gonna see Dog Joker uh, this week for sure. And um, or I next week, I'll watch it this week. I'm gonna probably gonna go to the movie theaters on Friday. It comes out next week, doesn't it? I believe it comes out. For oh yeah, you're right. It comes out the 28th, I believe. Yeah, and Quiet Place too. Uh, got a an update on Gum. It's back, baby. Gum is back. We are getting heavy gum ads. And, and, not only is it back, it acknowledged the fact that it died. Yeah. It was like, you gotta use gum again. I was yeah. like, well, if this isn't exactly what we talked about. <laughs> right. So, to answer the qu the great question from the great Dylan, what are you guys saying about gum? The truth. 